What's up everyone, Genesis here, bringing you a brand new episode of The Haven Exchange. Tonight we're going to be talking about the dreaded microtransactions in gaming. Gaming, gaming, gaming. <laughs> yes, we're going to be going over the good, the bad, the uglies of microtransactions within the video game industry, talking about some of the, the worst offenders out there, how some do it well, our views and opinions around the subject as a whole. We even discover possibly where microtransactions originated in the gaming industry itself. I'm going to take credit for that one, so check it out. <laughs> and man... Rick goes off on the biggest tangent about Witcher 3. Once he gets started, there was no stopping him, so we had to let him just ride that out and get it out of his system. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of the Haven Exchange. Keep an eye out for all the brand new episodes coming out every week for your listening needs. What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Haven Exchange, a podcast brought to you from the Gamers Haven Network. Hello, my name is Genesis, which is 48th most entertaining streamer and one of your hosts tonight. I am joined with a couple of my good buddies here and co-hosts to The Haven Exchange. What's going on, fellas? Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Phantom here. Just excited to be here with the homies. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And yeah, what's going on? It's your boy RC here. About to get down on a very interesting topic today. Oh yes. This one's gonna be a fun one. I do wanna I, I wanna skip back just to be wait, are you Phantom or are you Rick? It's, um, it's, we never know. You know what? I, you can call me either. You can call me either one. Uh I prefer neither, so pick whichever one you want. <laughs> <Just> uh, <laughs> His head won't turn to either of those. So. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's almost got perfectly fine. You're like, hey, bitch. And then, and then you hold. Know, oh. well, 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 hold on. Hold on. Not that. <laughs> that one doesn't work? That. No, no, that doesn't work at all. We shouldn't ring in the episode with that? <laughs> no. That could work. That, that could. It might work. We should try yeah. it on the next one. We should try it and see what happens. Exactly. Now, it's, it's all about evolution and evolving, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How you guys doing? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. It's been a very, very uh, slow, uh, very, very slow day. Very slow. You're out of quarantine now, right? Yes, yes. I am, <clears throat> as you could probably tell by the audio quality of my voice. Yes, I am out of quarantine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> negative on the COVID. Completely clean. You know, good to go. Did you have to like stay away from your kids during that period or or did they have to get tested? Uh no. So they they did get tested, but I did not have to stay away from them because they they went with me out of town. Mm. So so I didn't necessarily have to now, truth be told, we didn't really do anything when we left town. We were very isolated the entire time we were out of town, you know, regular uh what's the hand sanitizer, face mask, yeah. the whole nine. Like we were right? We were careful the entire time, and none of us got it. So I think we did pretty good on what we so, had to do. Vacationing right now has got to be rough. Although I've heard like the Vegas suites are super cheap right now. If Vegas is empty and you get a suite, like that sounds you don't have you have to avoid all the people. Yeah, go straight to get, like that sounds kind of fun. Yeah, that should do. I don't know if it's like yeah. that. No, that was that was like when COVID first hit. I seen that, so it might not be the case right now. No, I mean, flights are still pretty cheap. I think I saw a few buddies uh, actually went, they went on a trip to San Diego, and I think their flight only cost them like a hundred bucks or something like that. Wow. Yeah, which is pretty cheap because I, you know, just a year ago, California flights were like, what, 500 a pop? And my flights home yeah, back to Chicago right. from, from San Francisco are about 600 bucks. Yeah. Holiday yep. time that goes up to 800 to to $1,000. Yeah. 
Yeah. That could, that does not surprise me at all. Like I get it, you know, you're in an area where it's just the cost of living is super high. So yeah. Plus, yeah, like you said, during the winter times and stuff, they know that's when people are trying to fly the most. So why wouldn't you hike the price up, make a little extra exactly, chatter, right? Yeah, I nah, get it. Please. I figured, and we got to talk about that on an, on another episode. Conglomerates. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into conspiracy <laughs> oh i cannot wait i cannot wait jfk for the win oh, oh no it's oh man oh, coming soon yeah. come soon, coming soon. <laughs> coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> big rc what you been up to what games you playing these days oh man uh i actually recently bought myself a switch so i've been on that oh, Mario congrats OMT. yeah that you liking it oh i'm loving it a lot i'm loving it a little too much <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, uh, yeah, definitely been on that lately, but uh, going back and forth between that and the Xbox with the Avengers and Destiny 2 now because I got the game pass. So, yeah. some of the uh, DLC actually is uh, available now. Mm-hmm. DLC, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's that's kind of floating around the topic we're going to be talking about tonight a little bit. Ooh, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Before we before we jump straight into that, though, I'm curious with the now that you have the switch, how was your time split between playing on the TV versus playing in sort of the handheld mode? Okay, I want to say maybe 98 percent of the time I play on TV. Okay, uh, at the very beginning I play handheld wise, but it mm-hmm. is nice just to pick up and go at the same time. If I were to switch from the TV to the handheld, it's fast, it's simple, it's instant. I guess with shelter yeah, in place. Yeah still sort of a thing there's not many opportunities to really go on the go with it yeah but i mean i mean j- just to get around just move around while playing it probably yeah it's, it's the best thing mm-hmm. i mean i can see why uh nintendo's killing it especially with the kids using the product so yeah for sure yeah like i've i being a field technician before covid i've had a switch since launch i couldn't i can't even begin to tell you how many times i've taken a break while working in my car <laughs> you know, took out a few shrines in Breath of the Wild. Or, oh yeah, you know, caught a few Pokemon and uh, Let's Go Pikachu. Or you know, I love my Switch, dude. <laughs> it's easily, easily one of my favorite consoles of all time. Yo. It sounds like they're coming back in stock, so I definitely need to. I need to grab me one. I'm, yeah, ugh, I want to play it so bad. Yeah, Amazon, Best Buy, have a few. Yep, definitely. Yeah, right mm-hmm. So while we're on the topic of gaming. Our little uh, our little topic for this evening on the Haven Exchange, we thought it would be interesting to sort of talk, discuss, debate microtransactions in video gaming. There's a lot of uh, polarizing discussions going on about this, whether it's destroying the gaming industry, whether it's just sort of the natural evolution of video game products out there. So we thought it would be interesting to just have a conversation about that, see where our heads are at, go through some of the worst <laughs> worst offenders and and maybe justify the means for a microtransaction. That is what we're going to be talking about tonight. I personally I think there's a time and a place. I think that's how it works. I think with microtransactions, I feel the same way about permadeath or it sort of depends on how you mm-hmm. utilize it if it's mm-hmm. going to be a, a useful thing and I don't know. I, I've never really been too bothered by it because it's just like I'm not going to buy it if I don't want it. I don't want the thing, you know. I don't know. What are you guys? What are you guys feeling off the off the cuff temperature on micro transactions? <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep mine as simple, short as possible. But I feel as if micro transactions could be good, be used for good and bad. You know? Yeah, for uh, sure. I feel like for a new developer coming up with a popular game, and they may come up with some cheap DLC for customizations or something like that. Let's just say maybe like for fifty cent a dollar a pop. I mean, I think that's good. That's harmless. You're not hurting nobody. But well, well, well. Wait, wait a second there though. Okay. Fifty cents a dollar. Call of Duty. What was it? Black Ops. The original Black Ops came uh-huh. out with the, the 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 dot. Do you remember dot in 2019? <laughs> I don't remember that too much, man. Because I never really got into the Black Ops uh, series. But they I'm, were selling. I'm, I'm taking word for it. Radical. It literally just a dot that you could apply to your to your weapons for a dollar, and it of course went on sale for fifty cents. Oh uh, my god! I was that, not aware of this. 
it garnered a lot of attention a few years ago. All right, it's a dollar, right? But you're also only getting a dot. That feels to me like that should have just been something included. I don't know. I don't know. Well, <laughs> but on the flip side, though, I, like I get it. Something like that should have been included. But I, I would also guarantee you. I, I don't want to say guarantee because I'm not a betting man and I'm not a hundred percent sure. Right. But I'd be, I'd be, you know, I, I would get assume that that dot is also unlockable in the game, right? It was probably unlockable uh, in the game. I don't think it was. I don't think it was because I don't think Black Ops had a progression path unlocking like they do now with the battle pass sort of formula. Mm-hmm. I don't think they had that back then. Well, now here, now here's the other thing too. When you say dot, okay, what are we talking? Just a plain dot, or was it like a custom dot, like like a skull uh, reticle or something like that? It was it was a little red circle? Okay, <laughs> the Abram dot. It, okay, it's it's called it's called open dot, <laughs> hmm. and it was a dollar when it was originally released. <laughs> And it's uh, so its description is custom reticle that be ca- that can be equipped on the reflex. So it's not even something that would have been equipable on everything, uh, from what I understand. I mean, come on, come on. Yeah, it's, no. that's sort of it's a flag on the play for microtransactions, in my opinion, for well, something like that. No, I I, I I definitely agree, especially with a big company like that. Yeah, franchise. Yeah, of course. To so go back to what you were talking about earlier. If I had to pick a side, honestly, about if microtransactions were good and bad, honestly, I would say most of the time it is bad, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like the way it progressed through history, like ever since the very beginning of microtransactions and how it is now, I feel like a lot of game developers have cut corners to where they don't even put out full games. Sure. And then they expect you to pay for the rest of it through money I think transactions. That sounds more like I remember there being a lot of uh, controversy around, oh, I can't remember what game it was, but or the DLC was already included on the physical disc. Like it was there and basically that was the Destiny part- one. I appreciate you talking about the Destiny one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where like you basically the purchase only unlocked what was already within the game code. Yeah. Which does feel that feels grimy, right? Like as a, as a buyer, Yes. You go to purchase that. I don't. I don't even know how that information would have came about. I'm guessing like people dug into the code and realized that it was there. Maybe it was on the main screen or something. And it was grayed out, and now it was there. But that still wouldn't really fully explain that that was within the game ahead of time. Like, would you have been okay with it if if you had no idea that it was what it was part of the core game and you just were unlocking it? No. I still would have been okay with it. I feel like all that content should have been released on, on day one. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, it's like at that point, you could tell like they're just trying to milk it for all it's worth. Well, are you yeah. against DLC in general then? Well, DLC, uh, depend on how it's utilized. It's like we it, have to find a difference, right? Between microtransactions right. and DLC. Okay. So, yeah. So for DLC, I see that being actual content related to the game that extends the gameplay of like whatever you're doing. So I guess story wise or mm. maybe uh more maps for multiplayer. So kind of like the old terms of like expansions. Yes. So yeah. I feel as if if it's planned out right where like there was no idea for this, not whatsoever, and then you just came up with it and started working on it afterwards. Mm-hmm. Then, I'm totally down, but these days you can't even really tell if, if that's the case. So your gripe is kind of with the timing of it, the timing of development, I should say. Hmm. So like if a game developer X is sitting there building out their game, okay. at the same time they're building out content that they are like, okay, they're sitting around in their office like, hey, hey we're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get them. Yeah. <laughs> let's keep let's keep these these bulk of levels for future purchases then that's where you're like nah i'm not i'm not down with that but if like the game released they developed and they're like okay what's next should we work on a sequel should we work on this bag of levels or content or something then you then you're kind of like okay i get it yes yeah I see yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but but like i said DJ, you can't even tell because like right you can't i feel like a lot of people today are not even truthful 
mm-hmm. about you know wanting to uh, put information out there on uh, Twitter or Facebook or whatever, you know? Yeah, and I mean, you're like me, where I'm, I'm a little paranoid of the man and, oh and big God. corporations, where uh-huh. there's sort of an uneasy feeling every time you have to like spend money on something because then you're like, oh, okay, they're just trying to get me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're awfully quiet over there, man. I I, I thought you'd be jumping all over uh, Big RC at this point. No, no, no. I'm I'm. I- well, first of all, I'm trying to be respectful. I'm trying to let him get his point across. <laughs> right. uh, and I mean, nothing. He's not saying anything necessarily wrong or anything. I just don't. Yeah. I just don't know if. I think the dot thing in Call of Duty that's egregious, right? I'm mm-hmm. I'm against microtransactions when they are incredibly predatory. Where it's like, okay, you can only get this if you spend the dollar, right? Right. But when it's on the flip side, where hey. You can unlock this through the game by normal play, or if you don't like, say you want this specific item, you want this costume, mm-hmm. but you just don't have the hours to to put in that's necessary for it. Give us a couple bucks, and you know you can have it. I'm, I'm do you also have more time it. than money, or do you have more money than time? Exactly. The I think the people who I think a lot of the people who complain about microtransactions, I feel like they are valid in why they're upset. But at the same time, I think that at the end of the day, if if there are people out there who are willing to pay and if the company is willing to sell it, I don't understand why we put these glasses on with everything when it in com- when it involves money and we make it seem like it's companies mm-hmm. being greedy when it's not greedy to want to keep your doors open, <laughs> you know, and keep the lights <laughs> on. And, and pay employees. You, it's not you say that, but the term snake oil salesman is a thing because it was a thing. Yeah, no. And I get that. I get that. Like it's it's different though if I if I sell you a sixty dollar game, right? Mm-hmm. And then right. I say, okay, cool. I'll use Metal Gear Solid Five, uh Fan and Pain, of course. So I'll say <laughs> here's a sixty dollar game. I'm gonna give you the single player and you can't play the multiplayer unless you pay a monthly fee or whatever. That's horrible, mm-hmm. right? But that's not yeah. what, that's not what's happening. What's happening is you're paying sixty bucks. You go into Metal Gear Online, and they're like, "Hey, you can unlock these outfits, or you know, pay for them. You know, you can unlock them through normal play." And I, I guess there's a debate on the length of gameplay that's required. Like when people were going nuts about Star Wars Battlefront Two. And you had to put like thirteen hundred hours to unlock Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. That's mm-hmm. insane. That's insane. That's not. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I would actually argue that I don't think that was necessarily true either, because I think I, it's not even worth the calculation. It's still possible. I think it's still possible to unlock everything. And I mean, what are we talking about when you when you purchase? Like you're getting some costumes and stuff. Nothing that is really heavily affecting gameplay. Right. Because we don't. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no! So the fact that 1,300 hours required to unlock every single thing, 100 percent percent of the stuff, is to me is kind of bullshit. I I mean, I don't know the details, so I I can't really say too much because I my gut is telling me that that is also including unlocking costumes, characters, things that don't give you an edge in the gameplay, and there may not be anything that gives you an edge in gameplay. Right. Which case, it's like shut the fuck up. (laughs) <laughs> right. There's no benefit to 100 percenting the stuff because 90. I, I, I this is something that I would 100 percent back that it doesn't affect achievements. Most achievements don't that most achievements aren't something like, hey, play Fantasy Star Online 2 and unlock every weapon in the game and every outfit, every pair of shoes like that. That, that doesn't happen. Not to yeah. mention there's no tech. There's no advantage whatsoever. But the thing that. I'm very curious, you know, it's the same YouTubers, the same Twitch streamers and stuff and Twitter users that complain about microtransactions, but it only when it comes from EA, Activision or Bethesda, they say, yeah, they say nothing when companies like Rockstar have the worst microtransactions with Grand Theft Auto V. They use this idea that, oh, it takes 1300 hours to unlock everything in Star Wars Battlefront 2, but they don't apply that same logic to GTA mm-hmm. 5 mm-hmm. when it would take you 
the rest of your life probably to unlock every <laughs> every piece of clothing, every weapon, yeah. every car, every car upgrade. Like not to mention that they when they release new DLC, the like the criminal enterprise pack, you could not play that if you didn't have two point five million dollars in your bank to buy the the property that was required. Two point five mm-hmm. million dollars in GTA takes a long time to earn, or you can pay. Okay. Right, you could pay the twenty bucks with the shark cards. No one batting an eye for that. I didn't hear any. I didn't hear any controversy about that. But no when playing none whatsoever, nothing. Maybe the slope to accrue those in-game dollars feels better to the player versus Star Wars. You know, maybe maybe there is that slope, that experience that you get hypothetically in Star Wars. There is a bar. And to get to a thousand, you unlock everything. And every day you're playing for eight hours and you don't even see your bar fill up. That's just a bad player experience. So that's like that's a secondary issue that they had. And I'm not saying this was the case, but it sounds like that's what the case was. Mm-hmm. But it's but, just a bad player experience. Yeah. It, it, well, now that that could be the case, too. But in the case of GTA, right, you need two point five million dollars in order to to do the criminal enterprise pack missions, right? On average, GTA five earnings per mission is anywhere from 15,000 to 50,000, right? Okay. So if you need to get to 2.5 million, you're looking at a couple days worth of gameplay. Uh, Or, I mean, maybe if you just chug it out for 24 hours straight, maybe, you know, but the quickest way is to pay the money. But, but that's, but that's my point. It, it takes a long time to earn the money for the criminal enterprise pack, but there was no outrage. There was nothing mm-hmm. about GTA doing it, but, ne- but for some reason, you know, it's the, it's the EA syndrome where it, because it's EA, people just have to shit on them. Yeah, Even EA if- has this like evil, <laughs> evil <laughs> villain <laughs> persona to the, to the public and community, which is insane. They make so many good games. And yeah. outside of their sort of like development procedures and like, cause like I have heard a lot of stories with it. It's, it's rough working there, but we're not talking about that now. We're talking about their, their games and their content. So whether the, the public perception is coming from more of the internal things, that is that I mean maybe that's the explanation there. Yeah. Like I I think there's a difference between sizing a company like EA. Like, okay, Madden 21 visually doesn't look much different. They updated the roster. The main menu looks identical to to an extent. Like they just kind of changed some colors around or whatever. Uh and then they added this new mode called the yard. A game like that with that little of amount of upgrades, I can understand the criticism. Mm -hmm. But when you go after EA for microtransactions being in a Star Wars game, but you're eerily quiet on GTA 5 or uh, any other game with microtransactions, like, why is the same energy? I I need that same energy. If, If microtransactions hurt the industry, I need you to have that same energy with everything. Not everything, right? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that, that, I think it's hard to. We can give multiple, like we we talked about the red dot in Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. We could talk about uh, the the unlocking of the multiplayer and Metal Gear. But I, I think they have to be kind of judged on a case by case basis. I don't think you can just either shit on all of them or sh- or just appraise everything. I think there has it has to be case by case. Like Big RC, sounds like you're kind of a proponent against microtransactions, but have you purchased microtransaction items yourself or DLC content? Oh, I most certainly have. Yeah, I, I am totally guilty of doing that. Well, guilty is a strong word, but <laughs> <laughs> it's hey, okay. I, I just had to be honest. It's your money. Right, right yeah. <laughs> so you you are a buyer. If it makes sense to you and the game content makes sense to you, you well, you will actually purchase it. Yes. How much yeah. of those purchases do you feel shitty about, though? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, when, when I get to a certain dollar amount, yeah, it, it it depends on the game and how much content there is and how long it mm-hmm. takes for me to unlock it without me having to go through my wallet. So uh, it definitely does depend. But I think I want to say between the 60 and $100 range is where I start feeling kind of bad. Like, come on, man. Like, I like cap of how much you put into a game you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. 
So like sixty dollars base price for a video game. So like you have forty dollar flux sink into that game if you enjoy the content enough, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Depending on depending on. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I shit. I used to play Clash of Clans, and I think mm-hmm. mobile is where this this sort of buying oh, model from. You think? Came yeah. From I think it came from that. That was the first game I really started sinking money into for time sinks basically because it was like okay this this unit that i would select to build next it would be like okay it's 48 hours this to complete or you could spend two dollars and finish it right now well i'm playing right now i want to finish that shit right now (laughs) so i don't even want to know how much i sunk into that game but it was definitely well over the hundred dollar mark (laughs) that you gave yourself Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that probably made me feel okay with uh, additional purchases going into games and, and i'm not talking about dlc like left for dead you got the new maps and i think those were what like five bucks a piece every time those came out or it was like five bucks for three maps or something like that for left for dead now i want to say around like 10 i think right? 10 to 20 dollars yeah but you gotta think about like like you're playing it co-op as mm-hmm. well, well as multiplayer as well so i can't I mean, remember like, though did the other people need the Need to have purchased it to play with them on those maps. I mean, I, think just, it was, I, mean, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. I mean, of course, to, to purchase the base game, but like, yeah, in order to, yeah, to play with other people, they need to uh, purchase the map as well. Oh, okay, okay, right. Where like some games, um, I, I uh, is a new one that's not too far out. Where basically, yeah, if you own the the map on one person's game, then every, is it Dead by Daylight? Uh, maybe that's dead, but it, it's something. Okay. I mean, I'll come back to it. But yeah, I know what you're or talking is it about. Like no way out. Is, you're talking about? Maybe that's there right. is stuff out there where one person can purchase the thing and everybody else can sort of enjoy it. Yeah, which I think is great because not only does that help also advertise the content, right? The people you're playing with may purchase it because of that. I don't know if I was making a game, I would I would and I needed microtransactions to support it, I would definitely set it up in, in a way like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Like I, I think for me personally, I think that the way they have microtransactions right now, I don't think I, I you know, I hate to say it and I know people are going to give me shit. I, well, I won't say it the way that I was going to say it, but, but I Put think up on Twitter, Phantom underscore GH. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think, you know, I think a lot of it just has to deal with people just, especially right now with the pandemic going around, mm-hmm. even before then people just have too much time on their hands to bitch about things that don't necessarily affect them. They just, they just have to comp- there has to be some sort of civil war or some sort of struggle with a lot of people and they feel like there's always they they're looking for the next big fight and mm-hmm. I, I mean yeah sure they're like the the red dot and all that kind of stuff i'm fine with them calling that kind of stuff out but if you're playing you know call of duty black ops world at w- or a uh, cold war and they are microtransactions, but they're all cosmetic. They offer no tactical advantage, mm-hmm. like like most microtransactions do. Why do you care? The companies need to keep their door open. They also don't. Uh, people don't account for the fact that companies are also combating against used sales, which they see zero dollars from that. Right so now. they need they need to come up with something that allows them to keep their lights on and Absolutely. to fund and to fund their next project. Like, I I don't know where people get this idea that we don't live in the real world where, Mm -hmm. you know, good faith keeps the lights on. Same thing with our next topic with with the free upgrades. Like, like, it doesn't work like that. Like, I get it. You you (laughs) feel like you're entitled to something, but you're not. You 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 get what you pay for. And if you don't pay for it, you have to earn it. It's that For for context. He's talking about current gen software. And being entitled to a free upgrade to next gen software of the same title, uh, which is something that we uh, we plan to discuss on on a future episode. <laughs> but he's I'm right. Again. I cannot wait for that one. I cannot wait. I'm going to. I hope people listen to me very carefully when I tell them you are not entitled to shit. You have to earn it. It's just, <laughs> that's just the way it works. I get you sort of see the arguments bitching. I still believe that we do need a public voice to sort of guide the train of 
companies that are making these decisions, and then you say like the red dot isn't that big of a deal. It's cosmetic. Let's say everybody was quiet about it. Now, maybe they feel comfortable like, okay, we got $50,000 off of this dot. Now we're going to look at the next thing that we can sell. And I think it's good that we sort of can have two sides of the perspective being able to to guide to where we all feel comfortable with. And I mean, we're not talking about the games that do do it well. And I think there are games that sort of create this balance with their community uh, with the purchasing structure that has done it right offhand. I'm trying to think of a game that I was happy to spend the money to get the upgrades on, but I'm kind of drawn to blank. <laughs> so many of them. Yeah, yeah, but now let me ask you guys this, though. Here's an interesting thought. I'm curious what you might think about this. Back in the day when majority of gaming took place in an arcade room and you put a quarter in, played until you died, and then you'd have to put another quarter in to continue your gameplay. Is that the first microtransaction? And why didn't that feel as horrible as the ones we're talking about right now? You literally couldn't. Unless you played through the game in one life, you had to keep putting money back into it. So why is that any different? Genesis, I never even thought about it like that. Yo, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man. <laughs> I, man, I don't know. I feel like during that time, it was something new, something crazy. That, that That's probably mm-hmm. what it was. So people didn't think about it. People just did it. You know what I'm saying? And like right. this addiction came where it's like, Oh, I gotta continue to see what happens, see if I can beat it, see if I get the high score. Everything seemed exciting back then, you know what I'm saying? I mean, mm-hmm. the, the fact that that was like new for everybody to experience because there wasn't a sense of ownership, right? Like you didn't own that product; you no. were sort of playing the product. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, you having your name on that cabinet, right? At that, right. at that site, er- everybody knew. Oh, he got the high score. And that to me sounds this? like pay to win in its infancy. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I really think that was like an early version of it, honestly. Yeah, I never thought about it till now. I'm glad you just said that phrase, pay to win. That's another phrase that I've never understood because mm-hmm. can anyone, okay, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, right? But okay. can, can, I can't think of a game where you pay money Warframe. to enhance what? What? Warframe. Right, but that, that's not a competitive game, is it? Well, I thought it was. Isn't it <laughs> I, I think it's. I think it's just. I thought it was. It's more just, of a co-op. Yeah, it's more of a co-op yeah. experience. Yeah. Uh-huh. But even then, you're not. But if that. But again, a lot of that stuff. Yeah. You're oh right. no! I'm, what's the the? Is it War Tanks? Oh, World, of, the one, tanks. World oh. of Tanks. Buy the dope tanks, right? That are well, yeah. winning the matches, right? Well, yeah, but you can also apply that to. You could definitely apply that to. Uh, Warframe too, because you you use the you buy the crystals or whatever to get better weapons and better equipment and all that. But it's a it's a okay. co op game. You know? Co op, yeah. There, there's yeah. no pay to win example in that, right? For sure. Right. But when I see people say pay to win, and the examples they usually give are games where it's it's either competitive, it's a co op game, or it's cosmetic stuff. Like I'm I'm not paying. Like if I pay for a red suit. I'm not paying to win. I'm paying to look cool. You know exactly. Yeah, that you know? red made you do a hundred more damage, and it was no other way to obtain it other other than buying it. Right, and that's pay to win. Now that was the argument against Star Wars Battlefront Two when there were a lot of people saying that it was unfair because of uh, Luke and Darth Vader's, uh, you know, the 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 amount of time that you had to put in to unlock them. And I'm thinking, like, well, hold on. You can if you if you're playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 and you put a well-timed rocket in Darth Vader's face, he's going to go down like any of the other heroes. He's not he's he, because you think of him as a cooler character. It doesn't mean he's more powerful than the rest of the heroes. Well, there was that. I mean, there was that that argument in Soul Calibur when you had Yoda uh, was Yoda on Xbox and he had a smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Smaller frame. Yeah. <laughs> A smaller hitbox. Like if you paid to unlock him, that is sort of pay to win because that's true. <laughs> harder to hit. Yeah, that's true. And that's that a competitive game. True. So yeah. yeah, it is a competitive game. But however, that's not that microtransactions weren't really. I mean, they were around then, but it, that yeah. specific game didn't have that issue, right? right. No, that was just console exclusives, right? But even then, you couldn't even pay to unlock Yoda. 
But I get I get what you're using as an example. I understand yeah, the yeah, yeah. example you're trying to give. If Luke has a smaller hitbox in Battlefront, it's harder to hit. That's on the boundary of pay to win. Right. Like if you're paying for some sort of an advantage. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, you can also make the argument, too, like if you're playing Metal Gear Online and you bought a urban camouflage, you know, you could also apply that logic to if yeah. you're, you know, if you're wearing a, a urban camouflage, you have a, a slight advantage in that particular map. I never played that one. So walk me through. You said that people said that multiplayer was only unlockable via purchase. But you said that wasn't the case. Wait, say that again? For the Metal Gear. You said there was people that said that it was basically to buy the uh, multiplayer side of it. Oh, well, well, it was an example, not specifically. How did that work? It was just an example, though. That The example that I used was saying that what if Metal Gear, if you bought it 60 bucks? Oh, that, oh, yeah, that was wasn't. Was, the, the, yeah, the multiplayer. Was, okay. Yeah, my fault. But there's now, kind of- yeah. Now, a game that is an actual example of that egregious behavior is Luigi's Mansion Three. You you pay sixty dollars for the game, and then it's a it's either a ten or a twenty dollar add on for the multiplayer. Like the multiplayer oh. not is not included with the game. I did you, not know that. I yeah. thought Nintendo was staying away from microtransactions. Mm, see, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> now, what 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 RC said earlier though about microtransactions and it, it's really more along the lines of DLC, not necessarily microtransactions, but the idea of, I, I hate it with a passion when they announce DLC specific DLC for a game. That's not out yet. If you, oh, yes, <clears throat> like if you announce a game and then you, and then you go, Hey, this game will have a season pass. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. But if you start detailing any information like other like if you start showing me anything outside of just the name of the DLC, I'm gonna think you <laughs> cut that shit out of the game. Dude, red flag. Yeah, that's a huge yeah, red, that's flag. red flag. Red flag. About like the timing, and I that that's bad on like PR and marketing then to come up with a campaign for that because that totally feels shitty as a consumer. You like you said, you see that okay, you're you're showing me the base game, and then you're showing me the additional shit that I'm about to buy later down the line. Like that makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. No, that that yeah. feels terrible. Yeah, I'm cool with them going. Hey, here here's Doom Three, and you know, look at this, check this game out, and oh, we we do intend to have DLC for the game. We're gonna sell a season pass. You know, buying the season pass gets you access and even early access to that stuff. But if you say, hey, here's Doom 3, and then here's Doom 3.2, and okay. here's the enemies that are in 3.2, you know, if you start really giving me details on the DLC before the game's even out, huge red flag. I, I'm okay. like, why are you telling mm-hmm. it, it, it? It's the same thing with PR firms in general. It's definitely a marketing PR thing because there are so many things. Yeah, because there are so many things like we've I think we've had this talk before, but think about the hype level that would have been if people walked into the theater for the release of uh, Captain America Civil War and they did not know that Spider-Man was going to be in it before they saw the movie that the theaters would have went apeshit. Right, right. But because (laughs) they they hyped it months in advance, like, oh, hey, look, then you show Spider-Man. You show all this stuff, and it's like, do, do you not know how surprises work? Like, do you know how much more <laughs> effective they are if you don't show? Like, I'm I'm cool for showing Black Panther and all that kind of stuff. You know, Spider Man could have been completely left out. And I mean, you can't you can't watch movie trailers these days because it's literally the entire story short form, from yeah. the beginning to start or beginning yeah. to end. I you know what I hate about movie trailers now is they're starting to do this thing where. The trailer starts, they show like a, a quick little sizzle of the trailer you're about to watch, and then they show the title of the oh, trailer. Oh, I can't stand trailer. that shit. And it makes no sense. Stop it. Hollywood, <laughs> if you're listening to me, knock it off. They ain't Stop listening. They ain't no, listening. they're not listening, but knock it off. <laughs> now, let me ask you guys this. As, as far as purchase models go, one I think we should talk about is uh, which I see more prevalent in fighting games, 
where the game itself is free, but in order to unlock the rest of the characters, that's where the purchases come in. Like Dead or Alive, I think, is doing that a lot more now. Yeah. Yes. Now, how do you feel about that? Dead or Alive is like the worst example, though, <laughs> because Dead or Alive is it, it, they they are doing it horribly wrong, where you can get the game for free, and then they give you like the core characters, like four or five fighters. That sounds mm-hmm. right. Yes, right. And then you could buy the the fighter pass where you get the remaining characters for for thirty to sixty bucks. But mm-hmm. they they literally keep they keep releasing new season pass, uh, new season passes, and each season pass is is damn near a hundred dollars. And all it Dude. is all it is in those season passes. It's just cosmetic shit. Exactly. <laughs> it's just weird outfits. Like yes. And they're on like oh, season wow. pass yeah. like 13 right now or something like that. Yeah. Uh, what was the total dollar amount for DOA 5 for all the DLC? Like, wasn't it like around $13,000? I'm about to look it up right now. $13,000? Yeah. Yes. For, for all the DLC for DOA 5. And I'm pretty and, sure DOA 6 is going to surpass that. And bulk of that is. Is uh, cosmetic. Yes. Yes. Wow. DOA sort of has its own culture of fans. I know I know that fan base is really hardcore that series. So it's not I, surprising to me that there's some high dollar amounts associated with it now. I could tell you this much. I definitely enjoy the DOA franchise, but like what they're yeah. doing with the whole DLC or microtransaction thing going on with it. it's it's crazy right now man yeah, it's like it's you're kind right. of sucking the fun out of the game would you have been okay sans the the hundred dollar dlcs that came out later but strictly the model of the game is free you buy the characters you want okay that that part i'm cool with but i've been playing doa since doa one so i'm or, i mean any price 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 is gonna be a bit, a, yeah. base list of all the care that should be in the game. Right. Oh, so, yeah. oh okay. Well, so you would you would want the base characters at least there. Y- yes. Well I, so at the, least the, the, the full price game of the base characters. Like like the whole the free game then you maybe purchase like two more characters because those don't take care of you play but with that's totally fine. Yeah well so okay so like to an extent like at first I was cool with the way DOA was doing it. Where it was mm-hmm. like, okay, here's here's the game for free, and then just you get four, mm-hmm. you get three to five characters. I think it was, mm-hmm. you get those for free. But it's just the arcade mode. It's just literally doing the ten fights yeah. or whatever, and that's it. And and I think the it's online, the yeah. And I think I think you could play online as well in the free edition, but you couldn't use any of the other characters. I believe then, you have to purchase that. I believe. No, I'm pretty sure that because it was the remember they tried to say the the story mode was the big reason why you were purchasing the full game, the story okay. mode with all the characters hmm. and it, with the initial fighter pass or whatever they were talking about. Yeah, where it was just like, yeah, like you got the, like the first five characters or whatever. And then that's pretty much just how that worked. So now <laughs> where they wait, went, wait, 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 wait. Because you're about to you're about to prove my point with what you just said. Mm-hmm. So they the game was free. They offered thirty to sixty dollar upgrade base and basically an upgrade to unlock story mode, additional characters. And then you said that it was bullshit that they came up with these hundred dollar packs that were strictly cosmetic, right? No, well that see that's why I don't I, I I'm going back and you forth. Yeah, I know where you're going with it. <laughs> I don't know if it's necessarily bullshit because uh-huh. it's 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 purely cosmetic. You don't need any of it. You don't Thank have to get it. Yeah. Now, the reason why, like right now, the total value of and this is for DOA five, the the full value for just the DLC, just the cosmetic stuff, right? It's it's just shy of eleven hundred dollars. That's wow. that's just cosmetics, right? But mm-hmm. then, if you were to include everything, like if you were to include the the characters that are not included for free, you're looking at a, a little bit over uh, eleven seventy seven. 
Okay. So, so almost twelve hundred. Yeah, almost. Yeah, you could say close to yeah, close to twelve hundred dollars for everything. You're talking the full oh. game with all the characters, all the costume pack. Now the costume pack, like they have one here called the Fun Theme Set, that's fifty five dollars. Yeah. The the Halloween debut costume set is sixty five dollars. I want to go back and forth on it because I, if you want to have your characters in Halloween costumes, and you don't, and you want to pay sixty five dollars, go for it. You know, fuck it. I don't. You know, I don't care. Right. But none of this is required to enjoy the game. Sure. None yeah. of that is is necessary. So. I on one hand I understand why people want to complain about it because they don't want they don't want the mobile uh microtransactions bleeding into console gaming but at the same time why is it such a big deal when none of that is required to experience the full game Yeah I mean well I mean it's it's, it's I'm sure jealousy plays a big role in that you see somebody else that has this dope costume and you're like fuck I don't have the money to get that so I'm going to go yell at the developer for for making that for making this situation happen for me that I don't have the money to do it. Mm-hmm. Especially if if it I mean, we talk about I have more money than time or I have more time than money. What if you have mm-hmm. neither, you know, and you're just trying to play your your game? Right. It's gonna fall into a crowd of disservice feeling, you know? Yeah. Well I thought I thought DOA had a prime opportunity to where they could have just said, hey, if if someone decides to buy a costume and say you're playing a character or say you're playing someone that has a costume that you like, just make it where if you beat that person, you can unlock the costume. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like just if you just fight that that person online and you win, you get the costume. You know, make yeah. it incentivize people to play it and get better and then not have to open their their wallets. Problem with that though is that Typically, the people that have more money than time, obviously, they don't have the time to get good at the game. So they're they're probably very they're going to be easy to beat. <laughs> so that costume is going to get spread super easily, I guess, unless the the person that beats them is really good, and then it kind of stops there. But All right. Apparently, the the whales, as the industry sort of calls the the fat spenders on these microtransactions. You know they're they're looking for that instant gratification. They play the game now. I want this shit now. I want this thing now. I want to look better than everybody else. I'm going to spend three hundred dollars. Doesn't matter. I got all the money in the world. And then they go and do that. And then their time is done. It's almost essentially at that point. They may come back here and there, but it, it is sort of a kick in the teeth to the people that are sitting there playing your game every single day, and their grind path is like looking at 1300 hours i don't know what that breaks down to long term or into days, but <laughs> you have to find that balance and i think that's why this conversation is able to come up is because we have our own sort of biases like what am i comfortable with spending versus what am i con- comfortable with putting my time into and that's why it's a, a topic of discussion and there you have it <laughs> Yeah. So what are so? <laughs> I mean, to like end that shit, like right, like, like that. But, <laughs> I was like, it's some mic drop shit. Mm-hmm. Big RC. What are what are some of the things you purchased that you maybe were happy with, or that you were unhappy with post purchase? I could tell you that uh, I am definitely a victim of purchasing uh, shark cards on GTA Five. Okay. You don't have yeah. to disclose how much you spent on it, but is it is it a is it a nice amount? Uh, yeah, probably. No, no, no. <laughs> how you gonna answer me? He took me. Like this bitch, this bitch bought another shark card. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's see. Okay, so it was definitely under a hundred dollars. Okay, worth of shark card purchases. What was your motivation but, for it for purchasing it? Well, property, uh, cars, basically. Um, mainly the rides, the, the cards on there, and, and luckily they updated the game where uh, I guess each week they substitute, uh, put in a new card at the casino that you can win for free. So that definitely helped with uh, me not spending as much as before. Oh, you didn't and, need like the money, like the cash to 
gamble for it, or is it uh, like like no? It's actually like a, a, a some sort of like spin to win wheel in the casino. They put it in there. Ooh. So, so now it's like if there's a card that's featured in the casino that you want, you have a chance to win it. So you, you go in there and play it every day at least for that week to see if you can get it. And if mm-hmm. if you do, they automatically drop in your garage, and that helped save me from spending any more money on shark cards. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that 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 in Twitch Prime, but yeah, I, I am. I I have been spending money on that. Like you get uh, money from Twitch Prime. Uh, uh yeah, apps? yeah. It's like if you log in weekly, they give you like a bonus two hundred thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Well, that's shit. That you'll get two point five million in no time with that. Well, yeah. I mean, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> sure. I mean, two hundred thousand a week. I mean, like, yeah. Oh, like, a week. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Week, yeah. It, they, they, they used to do a million a month, but now they cut it down to two hundred thousand a week. So <laughs> someone's been going on with the company. I'm not sure what it could be, but hey. Now, Phantom, you you sort of aired on the side of the company needs to keep the lights on. Mm-hmm. It makes sense that this purchase flow would would exist. Do you feel motivated for some games to buy these things with that sort of sentiment? So, like, are you are you when you purchase something, or are you motivated by okay, I'm I'm supporting the developers in this in this purchase? Yes. So, yes and no. <laughs> and what I mean by that is. Yes, in the sense, because uh, if I went around thinking that, oh, I need to support every developer uh, with a, a purchase after the initial purchase of the game, then I, I would be, I would have a ton of DLC for everything. But I don't. You know <laughs> I've I mean? seen your Steam library, my dude. <laughs> yeah, I have, a pretty, I have a pretty hectic Steam library. Like, my Steam library is different, though. Steam, a lot of those games are because, you know, I got them dirt cheap, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, they're like, some get like between Steam sales and Humble Bundle and uh Green Man Gaming, like PC gaming is different. <laughs> That's a different yeah. piece all its own. But in the case of DLC, GTA, you know, obviously I probably bought like I think I don't think I've ever actually bought a shark card. When I bought GTA five digitally, it came with two point five million. So I got real lucky and I didn't have to you know, spend the extra money to get the criminal enterprise. Mm. But I have no problem with buying season passes. Like I think I've bought, I think the only noticeable or notable season passes that I've purchased were probably like the first watchdog season pass. Uh, um, I think I, I think I bought doom eternals season pass. You're kind of putting a lot of trust into a company when you purchase a season pass like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Now see, Doom Eternal is there. Like Watch Dogs was absolutely a gamble because I got the season pass. I had no idea if it was even going to be a good game because I got it the day that the four came. Yeah, because I I was so hyped. I was getting the PS4. You know, yeah. it was it was a um it wasn't a launch title. I don't think. I think they delayed it out of the launch of it, mm-hmm. but it was like that following March. You know, so I was excited. I had my PS4. I you know. I was just excited. So I got the season pass, but a game like doom eternal where I, I, I could feel it in my bones that that was going to be an amazing game. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I could, I could feel that I was going to be completely enamored by it. And I was right. Doom eternal is absolutely my favorite game this year so far. What is their season I, pass part of entitled? That's the beauty of it. So they, I, that's the crazy part. I didn't even know the season pass. Was a I didn't even know it was a thing until after I had already beaten Doom Eternal. Mm-hmm. They did little to no marketing for it. Like I just was, I think I was just scrolling the the Xbox store and was just like, oh hey, cool, the, the year one pass or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then Doom Eternal came out in March, right? We just saw the first trailer for the ancient ones, which is the first DLC pack for it. We just saw the first trailer for it last month. So we're talking a good five months after the game came out before yeah. they started talking about DLC. That was perfect. I was like, okay, I'm in a hundred percent. in. It's, it's more doom eternal. It's my favorite game this year. 
I may even go as far as to say it's in my top 10 games of this generation. Wow. You know, like I loved it. I loved it. I still play it to this day. I, I see him on that it. shit all the time when we're trying to get him to play grounded. Dude, it's just a, it's just the feeling Doom Eternal gives you with the the heavy metal music and the constant moving and getting chased by yeah. diving creatures, dude. I, I can't I can't get enough of it. And I'm even more excited that they they said um that they're doing an Xbox Series X update to it. <laughs> Bro, oh, <man>. cannot <laughs> wait, cannot <laughs> wait. To, and then the DLC comes out next month. I'm 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 in. Not every game is a Doom Eternal. I mean, it's important for us. Like the three of us are sort of old school gamers, right? And the idea of season pass is kind of a new thing, at least within the past five years, seven years. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's understandable that you didn't know that right out front, which they probably should have (laughs) did a better job of letting you know. But I think season passes are pretty dope. If you have faith, they're going to follow through with the additional content. I mean, there's nothing worse than like finishing a game in eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. And you're like, man, that was so good. Now I got to wait for the sequel. Now these season passes allowed us more time with, with these things that we spent a lot of hours into a lot of emotions, a lot of like excitement and enjoyment. That's why I think like microtransactions, Peter over this line of egregious and but they see some of the positive benefits out of that. I mean, Big RC, I mean, what do you feel about season passes? Hmm. What can I say about season passes? I think they honestly they don't bother me too much. I mean, mm-hmm. I feel as if season passes help extend my playtime in a game I may like a lot. Mm-hmm. And usually I am um, happy with the purchases of season passes for certain games. Um, you sound like you're being very careful. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just don't want to say anything wrong, but I can't think of anything wrong. I mean, now let's see, I avoided season passes for games I don't like. So it's like, if I played it or I had no interest in it, I mean, yeah. I, I don't have to worry about it. You know? Did you but, have the season pass for um, Rainbow Six Siege? Yeah, I did for, I think, three years straight. Yeah, I, those I were really like, good. Yeah. yeah, they were. They were. You got a ton of content with that. You know, the operators all feel different. Mm-hmm. They all got their own unique abilities. Like, there are some season passes that are, uh, like, absolutely worth it. Like, uh, The Witcher 3. Uh, mm-hmm. The season pass for The Witcher 3 was absolutely worth it. Now, CD Projekt Red is a unique company because they gave you well i think it was 16 pieces of free dlc after the witcher 3 came out new quests new hairstyles just a bunch of new free stuff even though you bought the game awards from the president (laughs) for putting like poland on the map (laughs) yeah yeah when uh barack obama was president do they have presidents or prime ministers i I don't know what it was it's probably prime minister but. Yeah, but the, what whoever leads that country, whoever leads that country, <laughs> right. they 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 actually gave Barack Obama a collector's edition of The Witcher Two <laughs> they, yeah. because they were Paul, so they proud, were of proud of that shit. Yeah, they are, <laughs> that's dope to me. That is so dope to me. Yeah, yeah. like absolutely. Like I, you know, people like to say whatever they want about pride and all that kind of stuff, but I I, I don't think there's anything wrong with being proud of. Especially, not. yeah, Poland. I mean, come on now, like, dude. When you think of, I, I don't know about you. I don't know if you guys have played Witcher like that. But when mm-hmm. I play The Witcher, Poland is usually the first thing that pops up in my head because of how <laughs> atmospheric The Witcher is with the music yeah. and how you can tell Polish people who love their country made this. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's they such love- a masterpiece. it's <laughs> such a masterpiece. Like. If you haven't heard me say it, I'm going to say it again, and I will always say it. The Witcher 3 is the greatest form of entertainment. It's the greatest work of art in the history of mankind. In so, the- in the top 100 games, that's your number one. Absolutely. Now, like, it's not even... And everyone, Anthem, the whole Metal Gear is my favorite. 
Metal Gear is incredible. The story is awesome, but there are there are some flaws that you could point out in every Metal Gear game. Mm-hmm. The Witcher Three is perfect. Witcher Three have DLC or microtransactions? Uh no, no microtransactions. They have the ton of DLC, but uh, most of the DLC was free. But the two paid DLCs, uh, or no, there were three paid DLCs because they were. Oh no, I'm thinking of Oblivion for some reason. <laughs> But it was oh, it was two. Oblivion had DLC that was called Hearts of Stone or Heartstone or something like that. And The Witcher 3's DLC was called Hearts of Stone. So it's literally oh, uh, that's why I was thinking of Oblivion. But The Witcher had two DLCs. The DLCs added over a hundred hours of extra content. Yeah. So it was worth it. You know. Now, now, however, though, what if you were to find out that that extra content? Was already there in your game. No, that's a that's a different one. See now you now you're talking about uh what, what was it? Resident Evil Five did that. But remember that whole debacle with RE Five where <clears throat> when the versus mode came out or yeah. mercenaries or whatever and yeah, the versus. No, I the remember. Download, dude, the download file was literally like fifty kilobytes. <laughs> more, like, what the hell is this? Are you trying to tell me you were already on the damn game? What the fuck. <laughs> It You're giving me literally. seven hours of content in 50 kilobytes of download? <laughs> Dude, people were. I remember that. Yeah, that The I, internet I, I, was I was highly that. upset. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, people But that's were. what I mean. Like, you, you, that shit wasn't free. That had to have not... Like, there's no way they could have sustained on free content like that. No. no. I'm no. talking about... No, I'm talking about your Witcher 3, my dude. Oh. <laughs> No, no, they definitely. I, th- I, I didn't hear the transition to Witcher. I, I was still thinking of Resi. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, Capcom. Yeah, but um, no, you're saying a hundred hours of free content. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, I don't there's think catch. there's a catch. There's a catch right. somewhere. Right, and it's the price. It's the you have to pay for it. You know, like that. You said it was free. No, 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 no. The 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 season pass was not free. The season the hundred hours of DLC was oh, Witcher three had a season pass. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. The free DLC was all little stuff like free, like haircuts and and mm-hmm. hairstyles and tattoos and yeah. and horses. Yeah, stuff like that or extra missions. But it'd be like one or two, three missions or something like that. But the DLC, there was a lot of work that was put into it because the Blood Wine DLC takes you to an entirely different continent. They could, they obviously had to charge you for that. And even the other one, the Hearts of Stone, that one, it didn't take you to a new continent, but it took you to like a, a new island. The island was a quarter of the size of the Skellig Isles, but it, the story and the fighting dudes that can control tornadoes and tsunamis, like it was, it was dope. No, they, and you could tell in the price because the first DLC was like 10 bucks. And I think the second DLC was like 20 bucks. The Blood yeah. and Wine was the big one. That was the one where they were like, yo, the, you're going to an entirely new continent. There's no way this is going to be anything less than 20 bucks. You know, but even then, they went an extra step though, because when you bought the season pass, you got a pack of the Gwent cards. I don't know if you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about the Gwent game. Yeah. Like, dude, see, that's what I'm saying. CD Projekt Red is in a, in a league of their own. Cause they had a, a side game that was Gwent. Yeah. I understand that it's also internal within Witcher that you could play it. So th- the cards that you got was that for the the secondary product or within the game? Well, no. So the the physical cards that you got were the physical cards, so you could physically play Gwent in real life. Like oh, they, they oh. Actually, yeah, like oh. they were Gwent decks. Like I still have mine. No, oh, this was only oh. purchasable in stores. Yeah, this or, was only purchasable yeah. in store. That's that is dope. Yeah, and it came with like poker chips and then little figures that you know <laughs> correspond with the game. For and, twenty bucks. Yeah. No, the, well, this, it was like thirty bucks for the, 30, the whole. Thirty bucks, you got a bunch of swag yeah. and additional content. Yeah. Like when yeah, you that's... bought when you bought The Witcher Three, I'll do. I'll never forget when you bought. I didn't the bring Witcher... this up earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> I do, because we, because I was on the side of the positives of microtransactions. So this is this isn't necessarily microtransactions. So yeah, this true, is, true. This the rest of this might just turn into a CD Project Red appreciation post. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah. 
because when when the Witcher three came out, you got a free map of the the in game world. You got stickers. You got a Witcher medallion, and you got a um, a little note. in In the note, it said, "Hey, you know, we appreciate you. We know we've earned your money. We hope that we can continue to earn it." So. Starting today, we're going to start releasing free DLC and thank you for supporting us by purchasing the game. And there's a reason why The Witcher 3 is like in the top 20 best selling games of all time. And then they announced they're on the other side of the, the aisle where they're saying all the 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 free you get a free upgrade to the Series X with The Witcher 3. There are some companies where they want to look out for the players. The reason why they're able to do stuff like this is because they're such a they made so much money with Witcher Two, mm-hmm. they can they can kind of trickle that down to their consumers. But right. there's, and I'll go forward for sure to like Witcher Four. Yeah, you know, it's already going. And that at what point on after all that DLC? It's been a long time since Witcher Three has been released. You know, mm-hmm. at what point are you? Okay, okay, we get it. There's DLC for this, but when are we? When are we getting the next big thing? Witcher Four, right? Well, now for them, they're working on Cyberpunk 2070. Yeah, right. So you ain't so getting Witcher 4 for a long time. <laughs> no. And they, and they did just come out, I think, last year and said that they're not done with The Witcher. We very well could get a Witcher 4. I don't think it'll be called Witcher 4, though. Sure. I, yeah, it'll probably have some tagline. Yeah. Drop some more fancier oh. title. Yeah, fancier title. But Geralt, uh, the main character of The Witcher series, is not... If if he's not the main focus of it, I don't know how well it'll do. Yeah, you know, I think I think it needs to star Geralt, uh, and in his relationship with Yennefer, and they also yeah. have the the Netflix series. So whatever is sort of comes about with that, I'm sure we're gonna see some crossover content for sure. And they've already well now not necessarily. <laughs> because the Netflix series and the game are both based on the book, right? Yeah. But the Netflix series draws more heavily from the book, whereas mm-hmm. the, the game drew from the book, but they made slight changes. Sure, you know? sure. Like the fact that Geralt, in the game, he carries both swords on his back. But in yeah. the book, in the Netflix, he carries one on his back and the other is on Roach. Ooh, yeah, his horse. Shit, horse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you uh oh hey genesis when you go to work you should say the phrase winds howling to someone and see if they catch what see if they get what that is <laughs> okay like if it's windy outside just go winds howling and, and i'm just, still working from home so I'll, I'll have to remember that when i go back to the office i'm i'm playing witcher tonight like it's i, I, I <laughs> got reignited right yeah, i'm so <laughs> excited that he needs to get back on the game Dude, Phantom I'm, stranded a, for a little bit, and I was like, "Holy shit, this game does look!" Because I that one flew under my radar for whatever reason. No, it looks like a sophisticated fable, and I'm really excited to try it out. I have it installed and downloaded. I do want to play it. You know how many times I've told Sage that, like, because I know Sage is a is a big fable fan. Yeah, and yeah. You know how many times I've told him, like, bro, The Witcher is what fable should have been. <laughs> like, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that because Fable has its charm, and I like the humor. It does. I I guarantee that Witcher drew inspiration from what Fable did. Oh, for sure, for sure. Fable, like, okay, when I say Fable, what Fable should have been, I'm exclusively talking about Fable Three. I liked Fable sure. One a lot. I enjoyed Fable Two, but Fable Three disappointed me. I was I was not a fan at all. When The Witcher 2 came out, you know, The Witcher 2 was something special. The combat was kind of okay, but I like I wasn't in like I love the music. I enjoyed the characters, but there wasn't much there other than those two things. Right. Yeah. But, but Witcher 3 came out and dialed it all to a thousand. I mean, the music, the atmosphere, the the like there's nothing better on the Witcher 3 than going to the Skellige Isles and just listening to the orcs and stuff, working on their stuff in the background. Like we, need to re, we need to reignite the, the top 100 games because we never made it to Witcher. Oh, no, I, it would have. I would have fought you all. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can, 
you can't convince me that it's not the best game in the world. But it, it sounds like you have a lot of evidence to to back it up, which is delightful. Oh, dude, the you know, okay, it's called the Skellige Isles, right? Whenever you get a chance, just go on YouTube. Dead to the listeners, everyone listening, <laughs> go on YouTube, look up the Skellige Isles. You could just put Skellige Isles song and the music that plays through it. Dude, I'm telling you, it's it's mesmerizing. Like I'm excited. I've never seen I've never heard anything like this where it, it almost puts me in a complete trance, dude. You would tell you would tell Phantom's wow. passion about Witcher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not even Dude, this, dude, I think I'm going to replace Hideo Kojima with CD Projekt Red. For you. Yeah, at this point, <laughs> you're going to have to. Dude, I mean, I asked my two daughters, right? When we're in the car, what what's the kind of music that dad listens to? <laughs> I guarantee you. And they've asked me a few times, like, hey, dad, what's, what song is this playing? And I'd be like, it's called The Skellige Isles. The <laughs> Skellige Isles. <laughs> it's so good. That's the therapy that people need. Yeah, this is I why believe it. I believe it. <laughs> it's called. He still the- hasn't requested that in my stream, though. I get uh, toss a coin for your Witcher shit. <laughs> you know what? I, I've never tossed it in your. Or not tossed it. I've never requested it in your any of your streams or power hours because the only version that I have, and don't judge me, the only version of the song that I have on my YouTube playlist is the hour. It's the it's the hour long extended cut. Oh my god, dude! I'm telling you, I could listen to it for the whole hour. <laughs> like, I believe it. I definitely have my tracks for that, and I think that's that's something we should absolutely talk about too. Is these soundtracks for these games are so mesmerizing? Yeah. Oh, it's called the the Fields of Ard Skellig, and then there's a there's a there's a a, a beautiful voice of a female singing the, the the lyrics, and it's it's in um. I think they said it's like a, a, a Slavic language or something like that. To continue but, listening to this podcast, please uh, submit five dollars to our <laughs> as a, a paid DLC microtransaction. <laughs> I'm so glad you did that. <laughs> oh, that is good. That is good. If you were listening to Phantom rant on, if you would like to hear his his admiration for witcher 3 please submit ten dollars to our patreon <laughs> hey uh cd project red if you if you ever hear this uh i love you i want to be in your games uh, I, I will uh if i ever have a third kid i will name my third kid whatever you want <laughs> <laughs> didn't somebody do that with bethesda like there was a contest right like if you named yeah. it like if you were born on 11 11 they, oh, what was the name though? They, they, they named they named their kid Dovakin. Dovakin, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> and he, they get that kid gets like free Bethesda games for life. Oh, that's dope. They don't yeah, even well, like games. <laughs> yeah, but the thing that sucks though is like, I mean, you just named your kid Dovakin, but they also just got bought by Microsoft, so now I get <laughs> Bethesda games for free too, <laughs> for like. <laughs> For like ten bucks a month, <laughs> so <laughs> jokes on you, asshole. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so to round us out a little bit, what do you guys think going forward? What would you like to see sort of changed, or maybe what would you like to see more of when it comes to microtransactions? Because they're not going anywhere. No. So what What would you like to see more of, or how would you like to see them handled going into the future? In my opinion, I kind of. I kind of would like to be surprised when they drop DLC or microtransactions depending on the game early, cheap, or maybe for free. <laughs> so you want uh, free content and you want it right away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but also, also to be surprised too, like, like if you drop the trailer, it's like, uh-huh. oh man, this looks dope. I can't wait for it to come out. But then like, it's like, oh, it's coming out today. Right or, like, now. Next week. Yeah, like the instant uh, gratification. Like, yeah, yeah, I would definitely like that for sure. I don't think it's, it's never going to happen, but you know, yeah, well, we see it all the time. On what, what, like I said, Bethesda tends to be like announcing, and they're like, "Oh, it's available right now." As soon as you go to your console. Mm-hmm. For me, honestly, I think 
I, as far as what I want to change, I think mainly for me, it's the season pass and the whole like, don't don't unveil or reveal, I guess, your season pass content before the game is fucking out. You know, mm-hmm. like don't <laughs> don't tell me about DLC pack one when the main game isn't isn't available for me to play you know right not to mention sometimes season pass dlc can also be spoilers for the main game because you're looking at a trailer for a new uh, character that's in the main game so it's like okay well now i know that character doesn't die right or (laughs) or i mean it could be a, a side story but you know with what we said earlier that they don't they don't cut trailers the right way anymore yeah you've watched the whole movie at that point after seeing the second trailer what is it they call the red band trailer you've seen yeah. the movie at that point you know the you red can- band i thought was just mostly uncensored uh for a lot of rated r movies but yeah i've seen marvel movies have red band trailers so like i you know i don't i don't know what that means anymore Bird yeah movie? no um, i didn't know that yeah, I've seen, I think Civil War had a red band trailer. But yeah, like, I, I think that's my biggest gripe with the whole DLC specifically, mm-hmm. because microtransactions, you know, like I said, I, I get it. This is a, it's a capitalist society. You need to make money to keep the lights on, to, to pay your employees. I see, this is going to sound real conservative, but I see a lot of people bitching for free health care, but that money's got to come from somewhere. <laughs> you know? So em- employers can't pay for their employees health care if they don't make money. Sure. And sure. you have, you know, I, I you, they have to combat you sales somehow. You know, they, they have to. Everyone blew a gasket. When EA was charging for online passes, you know, and and that's what they solely did it for. They were like, "Hey, we, we, we don't make any money when you buy a pre-owned, and we're not making these games for you know." Some developers make their games for the love of the art. A majority of the time is to make money to either feed your families or whatever. But would you be happier with the gaming industry if we had? No microtransactions, no additional purchases, no DLC, and it just went from okay, we made one, we shipped it, we sold it, and now we're working <laughs> at number two that comes out three to five years later. Are you happier in that industry world versus let me give you little taste, little things here and there in between our our major releases? Um, I- <laughs> I know it's, 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 I w- it's hard. It's hard, man, because we grew up in that society. Exactly. You know exactly. Right. Right. And, 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 and now this is current. So, right. Like the idea of getting the full game packaged at once and released for 60 bucks. I like that idea, but I feel like because of the digital age that we're in versus the, the times we were in back just what, 30 years ago. Uh-huh. Or 20, 30 years ago, where we didn't necessarily need to, you know, there was no DLC, obviously. <clears throat> when a game, not old now. Well, I'm just saying, when a, when a game shipped, that was it, broken and all. Game had problems or right. was glitchy, then that was that was the final product. Yep. Yeah, you just got to get over it. Game, game breaking glitches? <laughs> Don't know what to tell you, homie. <laughs> you know? Like, you just play, start over, asshole, <laughs> you know? I would like to live in that world, but at the same time, I also realize that that world isn't possible as long as renting games and used games are still a thing. We kind of went off on the deep end from microtransactions to the state of the industry, which is (laughs) obviously you can see the passion that we have towards gaming in general and the industry at large. From the daily news that we <laughs> that we are all a part of in this in this gamers community, uh, so it's exciting. But it's funny. There's no resolution when it comes to microtransactions because we're still gonna be spending those dollars, and that's how wishy washy it is as a whole. You can't just say like, "Nope, I'm never gonna I'm never gonna buy additional." content for the games that we love to play because we are passionate about these things so if we have the extra few bucks yes i want to look fucking cool i bought fucking ant uh among us and spent two dollars to get a little fucking person to run around with me so <laughs> that's because it's 
funny and it's cool and I wanted to show it off. So fuck you. Microtransactions in my eyes, you can stick around. (laughs) As we trail off and look on the horizon for our next topic. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of the Haven Exchange. My name is Genesis, which is 48th most entertaining streamer. Go check me out there and all of the stuff connected to the Gamers Haven, along with this here podcast, the Haven Exchange. Big RC, what you got coming up for us? Where can people find you? For right now, people can find me on Twitch. Follow me at twitch.tv slash big RC underscore GH. If you like as well, uh, you use my username, Big RC56. And you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook with that name. Oh, boy. Ooh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Phantom, anything you want to talk about in your, in your, in your neck of the woods? Um, as of right now, I, the main thing you can follow me on is Twitter at Phantom underscore GHN. I'm still toying with the idea of getting back into streaming, but I think I need to move first before I can really uh get my mind wrapped around that um but Ooh. if i if i do decide to start streaming again you all will definitely know but yes. definitely follow me on twitter for a uh, random shit yes there's a lot of random shit there once again thank you guys so much for tuning in this one ran a little longer than uh our normal episodes but when when the discussion keeps a flowing we just got to keep going so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not too important, not too yeah, 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 yeah. Check us out on, on the next upcoming episode. We got plenty of topics that we're going to be discussing here in the coming weeks. We're going to be including a lot of the community members from the Gamers Haven Network. So that's going to be exciting to get some new voices here on the uh, on each of these episodes. And uh, you might even hear the elusive Sage, who is going to be a firecracker. <laughs> in some of these these conversations i already know it i already know i don't even feel comfortable inviting him on as a guest i don't know how y'all feel about that but <laughs> that man is gonna argue us to death we're gonna go on to like four or five hours with some shit because we're gonna be so passionate about those discussions <laughs> yeah oh, for sure <laughs> yeah Cool. Right. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, again, big shout outs to Big RC and Phantom, aka Rick, aka Ya yeah, Bitch. Uh, <laughs> we're going to try that out on the next episode, I promise. This is the Haven Exchange. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Peace. This is the Haven Exchange.